In this tutorial, we're going to go over the last section in our toolbar, as well as a few of the options under Image and Editing. So what I would like for you to do is go to File, Open. We're going to go back to that same folder in the Class Resources, Tutorials, Photoshop, and Pictures for Tutorial. The picture that I would like to uh, use this time is we're going to use the Seattle Panorama. We're going to say Open. And I'm just quickly going to go over what those last couple of options are for. These are essentially for adding to the pictures um, in a graphic way. Uh, usually you would use Illustrator for, for a more complex graphic, but if you simply want to add something at the end, just uh, text or title of some sort, then this is the tool tools that you will be using. The pin tool is exactly the same as it was in Illustrator. It can make a shape okay, simply by clicking it will make a solid shape. As you can see, it is now a line on top of that. Okay, I'm not really sure what application you would use that for. Uh, again, Control-Alt-Z will step back more than one step. The text tool, also the same. There's horizontal type tool, vertical type tool, and uh, those are the only two that you really need to know. The thing you do want to note about text in Photoshop is it's going to make a new layer. We're going to talk more about layers in a little bit, but the text color is right there. You can use whatever color you want. You can also do a color picker to choose a color that already exists. The size of the text, everything is exactly the same as it was in InDesign. You can choose your fonts, etc. If you'd like to go to Window and open your Character button, again, you have all the same options you have in InDesign. Um, but the difference being you're just adding a quick text. Uh, so if I just wanted to say Seattle, I'm going to add a little bit of flair to that upper portion. Maybe I need to go really big. Oops. Then I can simply add in the name of the city. If I wanted to kind of hide it somewhere, I could move it down there. Um, it all depends on where you would like to put it. If you would like to edit the text the same way you can edit the pictures, what you have to do with the text bar is first of all make sure you've spelled it correctly, make sure you've used the font that you would like, and then you will right click on this layer and say rasterize type. You now have the ability to edit that text in the same way you can edit photos. You can use the cloning stamp, the healing brush, any of those things. I'm not sure why you'd use them on text, but if for any reason you want to edit it just like a picture, you must rasterize the layer first. I apologize for that pop-up. Um, the last thing under this one is just the selection tool, the path selection. This is if you are using your pin tool. This is the same as in InDesign if you want to direct grab the whole selection or if you just want to grab a part of it but again that's only if you're using the pin tool and then this last one is just a shapes bar if you wanted to say put a square behind Seattle you can create that and what it's going to do again it puts it on its own layer okay so if I wanted to put it below Seattle I just click and drag I will go over these layers in more detail later the same thing with the rectangle. If you want to treat it like a rectangle and be able to edit its shape, then leave it as is. If you want to treat it like a picture, then you must rasterize the layer. And then it acts just like another picture. These tools are used very infrequently, um, but I would like you to go ahead and just add a title so that I know you know how to do this. You're going to go to File, Save, and then I'd like you to put it in your own personal folder. And what I would like you to call this one, under Tutorials, I'd like you to call this one Text and Graphics. It should be a PSD file, and you should hit Save. Okay. Um, that is it as far as the toolbar. There are the last couple of options are just simply you can move it around. Okay, the hand tool allows you to move what you're viewing, and then obviously the zoom tool allows you to zoom in or out. 
You can use the zoom down below. You can use the scrolly bars. And remember to zoom out. You can hold Alt on your keyboard. The zoom is exactly the same in Photoshop as it is in InDesign. I'm simply clicking and pulling in or out with my mouse, which will allow me to zoom. And then I can scroll up and down using the pieces across the side there. What you see in Photoshop is what you get. If there's something outside in this gray area, it means it's not part of the picture. It means it would be cut off if you printed it or saved it in any other format other than Photoshop. So what you see is what you get. The page space is clear and then anything in the gray area doesn't exist. We talked about these buttons a little bit. To change colors you can go there. You can also do the same thing you did in InDesign and change on the color tools or use swatches depending upon what you prefer. Um, and then the last tools down here I'm going to go over in a separate tutorial where we talk more about selection. But essentially this one just helps you with this full screen mode. Okay, Shows you more of the picture less of the scrolly bars. This one takes the full screen and all of the panels are going to be hid and you can see it tells you how to get back to it. You can return by pressing F or escape. Okay, But if you want to see full screen, okay, that shows you the picture maybe right before you're ready to print. It would be a good thing to do. We press F or escape. takes us back. Um, and then this one is a layer mask mode which we are going to talk more about in the next tutorial.